we visited Real Security, an IT security distribution and engineering company in Maribor, Slovenia, and sat down with their CTO, Alan Shalamun. The topic, BC Vault, a crypto wallet they have been developing for the past year. After being involved in many crypto different projects, uh, we have found the need to use a crypto wallet after all. So after testing what was available on the market, we have came to the conclusion that existing solution just didn't fulfill our requirements or our expectations, uh, I should say, in any field. So the hardware design was not what we expected. Uh, for example, too small screen. Uh, the application was totally user unfriendly because the things as installing additional application, having different wallets and so on was really complicated. And I just out of frustration came to the conclusion that it can actually be done much better. We have had many different names for our world and at the end we came to the simple conclusion that simple is the best. This is why we named it blockchain world. Uh, maybe you might wonder why we didn't use the wallet name, but uh, use the world name. It's very simple. Uh, wallet is used for everyday payment and vault is used to store uh, bigger amounts on larger periods of time. So we somehow think vault is much more appropriate because the basic idea of having a hardware wallet, vault, is to have a long-term cold storage for larger amounts of money and not for pocket money. I think the major advantage of BC Vault for sure is that we started out with a certain knowledge. So uh, we did have advantage of seeing what everybody else did wrong. So thinking about uh, particular points that were made wrong in the start was really helpful for us. Uh, this is a common way in industry because uh, when you are a pioneer, you always do something not on the most efficient scale. And the advantage of the second comer is, of course, doing things better. So um, when we started to design the BC wall, for example, we, we just thought about the user. So um, if you look at the screen, we certainly wanted to have a larger screen as the existing walls. Why? Because one of the most important things you have to do with the wallet or the wallet is to confirm to whom you are sending the money to. And that's one of the main advantages of using the screen. So if you don't see the address well enough, well, you just compromise the security of the wallet itself. Um, if I go on, um, it's really, really important uh, also to have uh, application that's user friendly. So the, the user has to know exactly what a certain thing means. And one of the main problems that existing wallets uh, on the market had were a limitation of the different crypto wallets you can have, for example. So you were limited to maybe 10 Bitcoin wallets and five Ethereum and so on. We just removed the limitation at all. So in every possible aspect, we thought about what the user wants. I can give you a really, really simple example of a USB cable. Um, our BC Vault uses the USB 3.0 cable, which can be inserted in both ways. So you can connect it whatever you would like to. You can look away and you can still connect it. Uh, where if you're using micro USB and turn it the wrong side, you can actually damage the port. And we've seen that this is something that happens a lot in the micro USB devices. Just, just an example. Again, as I mentioned, uh, when we started to design the product, we thought about all the aspects first. Then we designed, talked, planned, discussed, changed and implemented. So security for sure was one of the top three things well, actually the top thing that you have to have in mind when you're doing the wallet. Uh, and we took a different approach that some wallets did, uh, where we didn't use a super secret chip for storing the private keys, for example, because we simply encrypt them. So uh, even if you gain access to stored private key, 
uh, it's not usable because it's encrypted in a way where it's just encrypted and you cannot decrypt it. Um, why would you even bother with storing the private key in a super uber secure vault uh, where you have to send it at a certain point to a CPU processor to do the transaction? It doesn't make sense, you know? The chain is as strong as the weakest link. So you have to have the complete picture in mind, the complete chain, which is actually the application where the user is doing something, uh, which is actually the connection to the vault itself and then the vault. So for example, if we look at that application, uh, we can hardly prevent things as man in the middle. Why? Because those can be exploited based on the exploit operating system. So that's one of the major concerns that when a user does the transaction, he has to confirm all the values on the screen of the device itself to see if somebody tried to change the values. And you can be 100% sure that what you are seeing on the screen is what you are confirming and signing. Why? Because the signature of the transaction is done in the vault itself. So even to somebody would manage to change something on the PC, uh, you are signing exactly what you're looking on this screen. So with, with the whole holistic approach of the security, you can solve many problems of the user, but you really have to have the big picture. It's a very good question because users actually think that crypto is on the device itself. Well, it's not. So uh, you have to understand how whole concept of blockchains work and ledgers and so on. What the device holds is only a private key to a ledger that's actually out there on the internet, distributed. So no, your bitcoins, your other cryptos are not in here. It's only the private key you have to take care about and it's only the private key and the wallet address which is public that you have to restore. Uh, we have been thinking about how to do that painless for the user. Why? Because we don't want to limit the user with the number of the different wallets, vaults, which you can have on the device. And on the, on the other side, the backup procedure should be really easy. Even if you have like 20, 30, 40, 50 wallets. So we came up with the idea where we have a micro SD card slot. You just insert the micro SD card and then you do the backup in the application and everything will be back up to this micro SD card, of course encrypted, immediately. You can do as many SD micro SD cards as you want to. You can have one in your pocket, you can give one to your friend, you can put one in your real vault at home, you can put one in your vault at the bank maybe if you have it. Uh, you can have like 100 of those, which all contain all the information you need to restore all your wallets that are contained on BC Vault securely. Why? If somebody gets access to your micro SD card backup and they don't have your additional password methods which are implemented in the application itself and on the every possible wallet you have, they can't do anything with it. And on the other side, if they have the passwords, but they don't have the backup or the device, they can do anything either. Yes, uh, I mean, you have to understand the basic concept of the wallet. Actually, uh, a crypto wallet ha is an address, which is a string of numbers and characters, which is public, which you have to give to somebody to send you money. And then there is a private key which is again a string of characters and numbers. And this private key is encrypted with a special uh, encryption algorithms that use your additional passwords to encrypt them and they cannot be hacked. So even if somebody gets the backup micro SD card, there is currently no way to, to, to decrypt them without the password. In the future, that might change. Why? You must understand that encryption algorithms evolve, but um, if certain encryption algorithm will be hackable in the future, that will not be a problem of BC Vault 
itself, that would be actually the problem of Bitcoin algorithms or uh, Ethereum algorithms and so on. And of course, with the approach we took, we have no problem whatsoever upgrading the firmware in this device. So we have no problem of changing that in the future if that will be necessary. Actually, with BC Vault, we have been thinking about many limitations that all the existing crypto wallets have. And one of the main concerns was not to limit the user with the number of possible wallets you can have in different crypto. So right now, uh, based on the hardware limitation of the chip which we use, uh, which is actually a ferroelectric RAM, we don't use the normal flash. Maybe just to explain why, because um, flash can be corrupted if you do many different transactions in short amount of time. Uh, we choose to use much more expensive for electric RAM, which actually has 120 years of uh, retention value. So you can put anything on for electric RAM and leave it unpowered for 100 years, it will still be there. And based on the capacity of this for electric RAM, we can right now store more than 2000 different wallets uh, in one single device without a problem. Wow. Uh, many people actually ask us how secure is the wallet itself or um, how trustworthy do you think the product you are bringing to the market is? And my answer is really simple. Um, we have been thinking a lot about security from the step number one and every single thing we have done has been done with our experience in the almost 20 years we work in security field. So we said, okay, let's put uh, our money where the mouth is. And this is why actually on every single BC wallet, there will be a crypto wallet without a private key that contains uh, one Bitcoin. Actually, well, the private key is in the ferroelectric RAM. It's uh, just the problem of being encrypted with an unknown password. So uh, if you can hack it, it's yours. Uh, everybody on the planet will be able to see that the enclosed wallet actually has one Bitcoin in it because it will be the address will be public. So you can see from the ledger there is one Bitcoin in it. And the moment you will see a transaction on this uh, address that removes one Bitcoin, you know that somebody gained access and well, if that happens, uh, never say never. So um, if somebody gets access to this one Bitcoin, please, you know, call me. <laughs> um, one of the big dilemmas we came to is open source. Uh, you, you actually have a lot of people saying, oh, why don't you open source the firmware? Why don't you open source the application and everything? And the current decision that we made is um, we are not open sourcing the firmware and application yet because uh, we are still in the development phase where we are adding new features, things like that. Uh, also, the security audit reviews are being done right now on, on the code as it is. So um, it's not a proper time to talk about open source when you bring out a lot of new features that are unique to your products because the competition will have much easier job of uh, seeing how you have did it. But uh, we never said that we're not gonna open source the firmware or open source the application itself. That might happen in the future. But right now at this point, um, we're not open sourcing that. And to anybody that actually says, uh, I don't trust a device that's not open source, I have a simple question back. Um, do you trust Microsoft Windows? Are they open source? So, you know, you have a much bigger problem when you use something on operating system that's not open source. So, you should not worry about open source of uh, uh, just a small module in this ecosystem because if there would be a problem with operating system, and we know there is a lot of them, which are not intentional, of course, uh, you could be vulnerable. But of course, we also thought about that. So any problems happening with operating system, malware, stuff like that, is being taken care of because as I said, everything you have to confirm on the device 
the data you see projected will be the data which is signed. So if the destination address and the sum is on the display, you can be sure this is what you are signing. Um, if you don't trust us in a way where you say, oh yeah, but um, maybe there's something in firmware uh, that uh, enables you to steal my coins or something like that, uh, I can just tell you that uh, the whole code of firmware and the whole application is being uh, security reviewed by independent companies. So you can be sure that there is no such thing in it. But then again, uh, in this year alone, I think there has been many, many different uh, security incidents where a big company products had uh, additional root access to it, uh, which was probably not exploit. But uh, there really is no such thing in, in our device because, um, you know, you just do such mistake once and then you're out of the market. Uh, one of the main things that you have to do with crypto uh, wallet itself is sure integration with many different uh, services or products. And we have envisioned that due to additional functionality that's coming out in following months after release, which we already thought about and are programming and developing. Um, we certainly would like to see that uh, the device itself is not used only as a storage because you can use the device itself as additional security measure uh, as second uh, authentication measure for accessing your crypto exchange maybe or even your computer, things like that. So uh, with that on the mind, we have developed uh, API interface for third party integration, which is already live, available in open source format. So you can integrate uh, your web page as for example, uh, my ether wallet integration, stuff like that um, with our vault without any problems in a way where it goes beyond uh, automatically filling out just uh, address field on the crypto exchange, for example. So that was not good enough for us. We wanted a tighter integration with more checksums and everything, and that's already available.